Every evening in Africa, sunset draws the curtain on a daily drama of light and shadow that plays out in acts of life and death under the harsh African sky. As the burning sun sinks into a molten red horizon, a fragile peace spreads with the glow across the land. Gentle evening breezes cool the hot earth, and water holes are busy with animals taking their last drink as dusk moves slowly toward night. This quiet transition separates two distinctly different cycles of life, and every evening, the changing of the guard is a subtle shift in the mood of Africa. As the darkness gathers, the animals of the day grow ever more alert and watchful, fearing the uncertainty of the coming night. These animals prepare to surrender the stage to different players. The night belongs to the hunters. And the predators of the night are ruled by a monarch whose veins run rich with the royal blood of Africa, the African lion. The cycles of life in nature are endless. Every new dawn brings release from the fears that stalk the night and new challenges to survival. Just as every year is a cycle of seasons and events, successes and failures, triumphs and tragedies. This is the story of two prides of lionesses living out a year in vastly different parts of southern Africa the wild and remote Savuti Plains of northern Botswana, and the Kruger National Park of South Africa. It is here in the shadow of some low hills at a place called Munchi, where our first study pride hold the territory that has been passed down by their mothers and grandmothers before them. This is the home of the Munchi pride. Our story begins after the savage dry years of the early 90s, when the area was in the grip of the most devastating drought in living history. Everywhere across the bleak landscape, herds of gaunt animals are strung out like ghostly caravans, shuffling wearily through the dust. While others, little more than slow-moving corpses, search for nutrition in the dry ground. The few remaining water holes have dried to muddy patches of rank-smelling sludge containing little or no surface water. Food stocks are almost at an end. Only desperate foraging of dry twigs and dusty grass roots sustains the rapidly weakening survivors until the land once more feels the soothing balm of rain. In this desert-like valley is a small collection of pools fed by underground wells, and it is here that the females of the Munchi pride have taken up residence during the drought. Nine months ago, they both gave birth to cubs that have now grown into sturdy and playful youngsters. The dominant female is named Nialeti, a word in the local Shungan dialect for star after the light patch on her chest. Nialetti and her sister are close partners in the shared responsibility of raising their seven cubs. While the dry conditions are harsh on most of the bushveld animals, it is a time of plenty for the lions, who take advantage of slowed reactions and weakened limbs. The two sisters have changed their normal nocturnal habits and have become experts at daytime ambush hunting. Every morning, the herds start to gather in large numbers at the waterholes, and the lionesses stalk into position, 
Here they wait patiently for an opportunity to present itself. Sensing the right moment to strike, Nialetti eases forward, eyes fixed on an unwary victim, muscles bunched and ready to spring. A sharp alarm call betrays the lion's presence before they break the cover. When the nervous herds bolt in panic, the lioness relaxes, easing down back into position. When the charge does come, the hunters will still miss nine times out of ten, but the small amount of energy used with each attempt allows many more chances to force the error from already weakened prey. Occasionally, the territorial males of the area will join the pride. When this happens, the females will often drive animals toward the males, who sometimes manage a token effort at cooperation, but usually prove to be more of a hindrance than a help. These two huge lions are the fathers of the Munchi Pride cubs. On their regular visits, they pay close attention to the scent marks left by the lionesses, gleaning information on the sexual condition of their mates. Competition between alliances of males for the mating rights to a pride is intense. If a female within their territory is receptive, they will mate with her immediately ensuring that it is their genes carried through to the next generation. With the hunting over for the morning, the females retire to the shade of some nearby trees to rest, patiently discouraging the cubs' efforts to cajole them into a game. Like athletes in training, their young muscles must be constantly stretched and exercised. Every burst of speed, every tumble and every turn strengthens limbs and sharpens reactions. Holds and techniques learned from watching their mothers hunt are practiced on brothers and sisters. Early tests of strength establish a hierarchy that will ensure discipline for effective teamwork when they are ejected from the pride and must hunt without their mothers. During the course of the day, the water holes are visited by elephants, one of the few animals that the lion's presence does not deter. These giants can drink more than 50 gallons a day, and groups of young bulls gather to bathe and enjoy the cool water. Splashing themselves with mud helps to relieve the irritation from biting insects and moistens their skin against the powerful African sun. The areas they trample on the edge of the water provide drinking spots for flocks of turtle doves. Droppings left in the shallows are hotly contested perches safe from predators that lie in wait on the shore. And soon there begins a build-up of air traffic. Dung beetles make carefully packed balls of the precious waste which they industriously roll away for their mates to lay eggs in. Through the evening and into the night, peace reigns at the waterhole. <laughs> 